You never know when you first meet someone how that relationship may alter the course of your life. You know you want to <laughs> So when I was 29, I was in a really intense corporate career in Boston. I was working in the financial industry. I was pretty much married to my job. I worked extremely long hours. I was burning out. I also had a relationship, and even though I kept kind of waiting for him to propose, at some point I realized that he's just never gonna marry me. I kind of felt like after that relationship ended, I just wanted something really good to come into my life. I knew when I adopted Kaya that she had been found on the road with a broken back but she healed up fine, and when she came home to me, she was just so active and playful and bouncy, and you know, we were just so happy together. It was almost like we rescued each other. Wagging tails in the morning, it's the best thing. It's the best thing. It's a good morning, huh, sweetie? Yeah. I had this new space in my life, and Kaya was filling a lot of it but I was also really just open to new things. So I started dancing tango. Tango is like a language where the leader invites something and then the follower responds and then the leader responds to that. You know, it's a connection dance and I needed connection. So I was visiting Sarah in Boston and she said, I've decided to take a sabbatical from work because I'm, I'm kind of burned out and I want to do something different. I still say dancing tango is like having sex in public. <laughs> it's totally not. That's totally inappropriate. <laughs> Come on. What's that look like to you? It looks like I'm enjoying myself. Extremely well. <laughs> I was having a blast traveling and dancing tango and making friends and connections everywhere I went. And one night in Buenos Aires, I had a dream. I'm walking through a snowy field and I'm calling for Kaya. Didn't know where she was, I was really scared. All of a sudden, I hear from behind, from a distance, this soft, muffled, galloping sound. And it gets louder and louder, and I turn around, and it's Kaya racing toward me. I actually remember waking up crying. The phone rang, and it was my mom, and she said, something's wrong with Kaya. with like one of her legs was dragging every few steps and her tail wasn't like, she used to have that labby tail that goes, you know, and it was like more kind of low and, and slow. Oh, good girl. I knew when I first adopted her that two vertebrae were fused together from the original accident, but she had been fine for two years. So it wasn't clear why at the age of three is she now limping? I, I went back to the vet and they said, well, we don't really know what to do for you. And I go back into 
her records from when I adopted her, and I could not believe what I found. There's a compression fracture, L2, L3, appears stable, should heal with four weeks of cage rest. No long-term neurological problems are expected unless a callus compresses the spine, comma, 20% chance. Never noticed that before. A callus of scar tissue was slowly forming in the spinal column, killing off nerves. So if finally she got to a point where it was, it was showing in the way she walked. So I'm a fixer and I figured if this is possible to fix, I'm gonna fix it. Like this is energy, we can work with this. So I tried hydrotherapy, laser therapy, hypnotherapy, chiropractic therapy, vibrational sound healing, nutritional therapy, Chinese herbs. I was trying to do everything I could. We tried massage, acupressure, even though she didn't wag her tail anymore, just the little acupressure point would bring energy and then she'd wag her tail for like four seconds and then it would fall back down. <laughs> so for the nutritional therapy, I cooked meat and vegetables and added supplements. Meanwhile, I had moved to the Hudson Valley, and because of Kaya's special needs, I decided to become a consultant so that I had the flexibility to take care of her, which ended up being the best thing for me because I love my work. Overall, my lifestyle was better, but unfortunately, Kaya's condition was actually getting worse. I took Kaya to get an MRI, and they said, that the spinal cord was so far gone, it was only a matter of time before she was paralyzed and that I should get her a cart. As a dancer, freedom of movement means everything to me. So seeing my dog in a cart was heartbreaking. I also knew that once she goes in the cart, her muscles will atrophy and she'll never be able to support her own weight again. I took her inside and felt utterly helpless. The next day, I drove over to my mom's house, and when we walked across the driveway, Kaya just totally collapsed. She couldn't get up. She was paralyzed. I was just like, I want her to have a happy life. My mom comes back out with a towel and she loops the towel under Kaya's belly. You ready, Kaya? You ready? Let's go, Mama. Get it, Kaya! Kaya. Oh, what a good girl! Very good, Kaya! Very good, Kaya. Very good. good girl. look at you go! And then we start running up the driveway and we're like cheering and Kaya's running and my mom's running holding the towel and I'm cheering and crying. And, and so it was this great moment of like, okay, we, can build a sling. I heard about a doctor that does chiropractic and acupuncture, and I'm like, I'm still willing to try things. And she does some chiropractic adjustments. She does her acupuncture. And Kaya, at this point, is pretty weary of the vet thing. So I could tell that she was connecting with Dr. Heather. Woo! 
<laughs> After the third treatment with Dr. Heather, I bring Kaya home and take her out of the car and I loop the sling under her just like I always did. We started walking and I suddenly am like, the sling is like weightless. There was life in her legs again that had been limp. It was, it was totally like a miracle. Like I never thought I would see her bear her own weight. It's now been six years and we're still seeing Dr. Heather and there are a lot of things that I do on a daily basis to keep her walking, but it's so worth it because what's developed is our own sort of tango where we lead and follow each other and we listen and respond to each other. And she's opened up my world and made me a happier person. Come here, babe. Good girl. Kaya is visibly in struggle, but I think that we're all in struggle in some way. And her story, I think, is about the gifts that come out of struggle and that you never know what could happen, even if something seems terrible, that maybe there's something in there that could be good. And, you know, you may never get back what you've lost, but you could get something else and it could be beautiful.